My name is John Canavan, and today we're going to be talking about adjusting a differential controller. Now, we all know what a differential controller is, right? Well, in the case of solar applications, you might call it a differential thermal controller. What it does is it turns a pump on when solar heat becomes available from a collector. So you'll have two probes. One probe would be connected to the output of the collector and the other probe would be connected to the input of the pump. And that would be attached to the, the wall of a heat storage tank very close to where the pump would be attached. Right now there's plenty of sunlight available for heat collection. So we would expect our pump to be on. You can see these are the two serpentine collectors connected in parallel. And to the left, there's a hot box. There's no water circulating through the hot box, so the temperatures in there could get pretty hot. That's just used as a reference point to give us some idea of how much sunlight energy is available. Let's go up on the, the roof for a minute and take a look at the probes. So we have one uh, probe going into the hot box, but that's just used to measure temperature. The probes that control the pump are thermistors and there's one thermistor connected to the junction where are the output junction of the two collectors you can see that right up there and uh, the thermistor probe is just taped to that junction so we know what the temperature of the output from our collectors and this is the input to our collectors but we're going to measure that input temperature from the storage tank in the basement. So let's go down there and take a look. Okay, as you know, there are two probes that connect to our basic differential controller. And the first probe I've already showed you, and that's uh, the probe that's connected to the output of the collector. The second probe monitors the temperature of water that goes into the collector and that probe is taped to the storage tank right near uh, the pump. This is uh, where water is supplied to the collector. So these pump, pump water up to the collector. You notice I have two pumps connected in series because I have to pump, uh, pump the water about 25 feet. It has a flow rate of about two gallons per minute. Anyway, um, so this is where the second probe is connected. It's just on the other side of this, the insulation. Uh, so once you have those two points, the output temperature of the collector and the input temperature of the collector, you connect those probes to your basic differential controller. And as you can see, our basic differential controller uh, shows that the pump is on because the green light is on. And it also shows that there's plenty of heat available. Which means that if I wanted to, I could even increase the flow rate uh, and get, uh, get more heat out. But, um, I don't know, why be greedy? Spread the heat around, right? <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for your time. This is the basic idea for the basic differential controller adjustment. Well, it's 5 p.m. and our pump is still on. And it looks like there's still plenty of heat available. You can tell by how bright the red light is glowing. The green light, of course, indicates that the pump is on. Uh, and if we're not sure of that, we can listen. If you listen really closely, you can't really see this. But anyway, this is the return line from our pump. Can you hear that? trickling down. Okay, that's this is our drain back system, so the water comes down here. Now, uh, the pump is on because there's, there's plenty of heat available and the collector is much hotter than the uh, cold storage tank. But, we can turn the pump off by increasing the differential. Um, We'll lose a little heat, but just to demonstrate how we can adjust our differential, 
Let's turn our potentiometer clockwise. This, this will increase the differential, uh, but uh, decrease the amount of power that's needed to run the pump. Anyway, so our differential pot adjustment is right here. Let's turn it clockwise. Okay, right now I've, I've turned our differential pot adjustment uh, totally clockwise. That means that it will take, that means that the temperature inside the collector will have to be about 35 degrees hotter than the temperature in our storage tank to turn the pump on. And that's uh, quite a differential. If our storage tank is already 100 degrees, that would take 135 degrees to turn the the pump on. Anyway, now we're not interested right now in the actual temperature. What we're interested in is the differential. As long as there's heat available, we want the pump to come on. So let's turn our pump back on. Oh, you could hear it, could you hear it draining back? Well, I'm babbling away, probably couldn't hear that. Anyway, uh, let's turn our pump back on. So we're going to decrease the differential, so it won't take as much of a differential temperature to turn the pump on. Turning it counterclockwise. So can you hear, hear the pump just came on? Okay. Okay, so our pump is on, the green light is, is back on and there's still plenty of heat available. And we'll probably be collecting heat until about 7 p.m. We won't be collecting as much heat because around 7 p.m. The, the sun's starting to set. But we'll still be collecting some heat. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the basic differential controller adjustment. Thank you very much for your time. We now understand how the basic differential controller is adjusted to maximize heat collection with minimal power consumption. Let's check the heat collected in our storage drums during the last two days. Remember, our storage drums are connected in series with a baffle pipe to separate hot water from cold water and maximize the heat harvest. The BDC controller switches the pump on and off to maintain a net heat gain. Notice our hot box temperature peaks at 230 degrees Fahrenheit, but our hot storage drum only peaks at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Why do you think this happens? If you think the hot box temperature is high because no water flows through it, you are right. The hot box stagnation temperature is only used to reference sunlight intensity. From the hot box temperature curve, you can see there are more clouds present on Monday than Tuesday. As a matter of fact, if you look at the data readings over the last seven days, you'll notice there are more clouds than sunlight on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Fortunately, the BDC turned the pump off during those cloudy and rainy periods. We can't all live in an ideal solar home in an ideal sun-filled location, but with the right collectors and storage tanks and differential controller adjustment, we can make good use of the sun's energy that's available to us.